Hello, 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 and welcome back. Today I will show you what has happened, and a lot of stuff has happened. And, first of all, you can see how smooth all is rolling around now. And uh, one thing is the, was the ball itself, but it also was uh, something I did to the program. And uh, then, We'll start to look at the uh, PID regulation. So we introduce to you the Mr. Derivative. So let me show you that. So the system is oscillating. And now Mr. Derivative is going to contract. So uh, yeah, you'll see what happens and we'll talk about that later. So Mr. Derivative is now ready. Together with the proportional control. So it's stopping faster. So we'll talk a little bit about the Mr. Derivative. And also, something happened to that uh, display. Well, not the display, but the distance measurements. I have no idea what uh, happened there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but... Uh, I changed the code and I w when I was going to change it back I didn't get it. So I think I set up the timer correctly then. And then it didn't make sense to me that uh, I had to make a prescaler for the timer so that it doesn't, when the wave was traveling over here and back again, the timer didn't t uh, overflow. But that doesn't make any sense because uh, the speed of sound in uh, air it's like 343 millisecond and when you do the math so in theory uh, before the, the oscillator <laughs> overwraps we can have the wave go 89 meters so it doesn't make any sense as so we look at that yeah about the timer the thing is that when the speed of sound is 343 meters per second the maximum length we can have then before the timer overflows is like 89 meters <laughs> so no it's not uh, not that there's something else going on so but then the good thing is now I have 16 bit so and uh, we also look at uh, digital filtering so Mr. Derivative here oh, I have to put on power again Mr. Derivative it doesn't like noise, so this is after filtering, but I want to filter noise even more and get some more precision though for the uh, for <laughs> because yeah, so I want to uh, increase the frequency of the CPU so I can have more filtering or a faster filter. Yeah, that's what I'm. Gonna... And another thing, at eight megahertz, I, I can't use the PWM mode to get fifty hertz on the servo signal. So then I will resort to the, the the second best, and that's I uh, use interrupts instead that we talked about last time. So yeah, so that's the intro for this video. So let's start looking at uh, the filter. You may remember. So I implemented the filter in my code here. So here, as before, we are taking the distance measurement. However, we are now using the full 16 bit because what I said in the intro and then as you can see here we're doing something with the distance so what we're doing is we are using the distance that we have measured before <laughs> so we, we down here we are keeping the new updated distance and putting it back into old distance such that when the while loops here it will remember remember this value so, how much do we update it then? Well, let's say filter. The value of filter is 2. Now, if value of filter is 2, then you have 2 times distance. So, 2 times distance divided by 200 is 1% of distance. So, yeah, so here, as you can see, I've set it to 25 of 200. 
So that's approximately 12.5%. So for every new distance uh, measurement, we are updating the old measurements by 12.5%. Let's see what happens. This is a bit twitchy as you can see. And you can hear it also. Let, now I'm just moving the ball. So it's, it's uh, as you can see, it's going back and forth. I think need some light there. It doesn't seem so bad, but you can see some uh, twitching. So now, let's get back to the program. And let's try that 12.5% thingy. And, uh, let's run it again. So what happens now is that now filter 25 is defined. And uh, therefore this part of the code is then run. Is compiled also or linked in. So, can you see how it updates very smoothly? It's like for every centimeter or something, it has a step. So, check it out. Oops. Uh, wait, 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 wait a moment. So, that's why it's moving so smoothly now. It's not jerking around, because before it uh, it moved falsely. And then uh, I think the ball uh, didn't like that. So, the other effect here is that if you update this uh, new value with the current measurement, with a percentage is too low. What do you think happened then? So let's say 1%, and that's extremely low though, so uh, especially for the frequency that we are sampling at now. So, so now we are updating the new value with only 1%. So <laughs> it's actually not working properly, but check it out. Check how slow it moves. There's some, also some other effects, uh, because this is not a um, floating point n integer uh, number, it's a integer, and therefore adding 1%, well, sometimes you will get some uh, lost, so you will never get to the actual value, because some precision is lost there, so let's try per 5% then. Coding. Now I have the ball. You can see it's moving faster, but it still has some. It takes some time to adjust itself. And what do you think happens to the ball? The the beam is supposed to all go all the way up when the ball is at the end, but it hasn't done it yet, it's too long, the delay is too long. So uh, so this filter is too slow. But that also does work, uh, <laughs> that means that it uh, actually works. So we can set it to, let's say, 40, so that's 20%. So that's, now we are not filtering that hard anymore. So let me show you. So this doesn't mean that much to uh... so there's some <laughs> also some weird effects I've never seen before. Actually. So now you can see it is uh, faster. So as you can see, it's moving, still moving quite uh, 
filtered and the response is much faster so that's fun. but now we are moving on to a guy called uh, Mr. Derivative and he this guy is, is so sensitive to noise let me see so this is the part we have been running and now it's the same part but we are adding Mr. Derivative so he, the guy's here and I think uh, as, and I, in, the beginning, in the beginning of the video I talked about Mr. Derivative he makes changes to the force on the ball in proportion to change so if the new error that we are measuring here is larger than the last one then we know it's moving away from the center because when the ball is moving towards the target then we know that the error is going down so if the error is going down then the sum of this will be negative so that means if it moves fast toward the center then the um, the value let's say uh, the new error is much larger than last error then you will have a large negative number so it moves the opposite way uh, then the ball uh, moves and so what does this mean well, so uh, let me add this. And now I have set the filter to be very, very poor. Or it doesn't filter much. Let's say it's 80 though. Okay, so send it away. So now the, the <laughs> filter guy, uh, the filter is not helping Mr. Derivative any, anything. You see that it, it is uh, working, but um, so what does Mr. Derivative do then? Well, as you can see, we can move the ball this way. It doesn't take long before it starts to counteract, and when it falls down, it levels out before it hits the center. It's sort of breaking it, as you can see. And that's what the Mr. Derivative do. But we, you can see that it was bouncing around. So, and now if I make filter it too much, then the filter is too slow. So, but I found that uh, 25, that means 12 and a half percent. This works. For now, anyway. So, I'm going to make this sampling faster, by increasing the megahertz. And then, uh, yeah. You can see that it's not so twitchy anymore. But it's it does work. So the point of the derivative is to stop the ball. So when it's rolling toward the target, the error gets smaller. And if it's rolling in fast, then the beam will then try to break it down. So it does have some mistakes at the center. I don't know why actually. So, and then back again, and then stop. But it's not very precise, it's, it doesn't land on the same spot every time. So, um, and when the ball is moving slow, then this Mr. Derivative, uh, he doesn't uh, make anything, because uh, if there's no change, there's no... Uh, there's no uh, force on the ball, so except from uh, except from the proportional one, and then the proportional one. That's the one that makes it roll towards the center all the time. And if that isn't high enough, you have a integrator part, and we'll look at that later. But uh, and the integrator part is <coughs> works uh, in this way. Let's say you are this close to center because the ball has stopped. I can stop it here also. So it, will, it will never reach the target because there's some friction and uh, yeah, the ball can't uh, get over some bump or whatever it is, some disturbance. So what happens is 
like the derivative, it uh, has to do with change. It has to do with time. Because if it stays this far from the center or the target, then the error is this large. And then in the next sample, it will then add itself to the old one so that we get this large. And the next sample is this large. So as you can see, it accumulates. That's what the integral part does. It, it accumulates all the errors over time and when it has uh, stood there for long enough then uh, if you make the change on the force on the ball proportional to the integral then you see that the integral is getting larger and larger and larger because it is staying away from the target and then oh, the beam will start to move because of this so then it will start to roll and then if the integral is too large or the um, constant is too large it will continue to roll this way though so it mustn't be too large though because you want it to sort of level itself I haven't tried it yet so I shouldn't talk too much about it before I try it so this is a, this is a little bit funny though so, and uh, this uh, derivative again mm, I've set him to 300 times 200 so that's 3 of 2 so let's make him a little bit more angry or active so let's say 400 per 200 what's that? is that like 200 percent? so let's see Now we will get much more jerkiness. So, you can see how fast it acts. Okay. And remember, the proportional part, the only thing that the proportional does is to keep the ball rolling toward the center and as closer you get, the error is proportional to the beam's level also. And the derivative part has to do with the change. It's not as easy to see the change. Look, if I push the ball now. Do you see that? It, it automatically levels out at once. So uh, it stops it faster. So let's make it even more angry. Let's say 600. I don't know if uh, this thing wraps around. We could say 60 over 20, maybe. Maybe it's not precise enough. Uh, well, let's see. So now it's more angry. A bit twitchy, so I'm hoping with a new filter it will get better. And also, when I switch out the PWM with interrupts, this one will be much more precise than all this uh, stepping it does. Check this out. Same goes on this side. So if I move it slowly. It just gradually levels out, so that's the proportional part. But uh, the change part, if I move it fast, this is a large change. You can see that it tries to break it or uh, make it stop. So that's what Mr. River does, and he's, now he's very angry, as you can see. over on that side so uh, to get this uh, steady state it's called so the steady state adverse is when it stops but it, it's away from target and we need the integral part to get it back into target because everything has stopped 